Hey everyone, I want to thank you for watching this video. We have an awesome opportunity to present an online experience for you and I believe you are truly going to enjoy it. So I have two things to ask of you. If you are impacted by this message in any way, I want you to email us, share at liferevolutionc.com. The information is below as well. Also, for those of you who are partners of this church or desire to give to this church, we have two options where you can give, and that is via our text giving or our online giving. I'm going to ask you to help us to continue to spread this gospel in an incredible way. So whether you are on your laptop, your device, or your television watching this video, get ready because we are about to find out what it looks like to turn our lives inside out. Enjoy it, and I can't wait for you to experience this online video. Peace. Um, I believe this is a very pivotal epistle or letter um, that was written by Paul that is pivotal to the church right now. Right. I believe the things that are have been written um, in Ephesians are vital, and so much so, I don't know if you are used to this, uh, probably not on a Sunday, um, but this church, um, again, we are, we are in a, a place where we are really rebuilding and resetting some things as to um, how, how God is, is leading us to set it in this church. Um, God told me many years ago that this would be a multicultural, multi-generational church of people from all ages and walks of life um, who, would, who would plant themselves in this church and, and you will see CEOs sitting next to the homeless you will see the broken next to those who hold, those who are laughing next to those who have sorrow, and they'll be coming, to, coming together because it'll be an echo of heaven. That's what heaven is going to look like. It's not going to be any boundaries around it. It's going to be a place made of total praise, total liberty, total worship as we fall on our faces and we ascribe the word holy to who God is. And Ephesians is a very important letter that's been written to the church. And so uh, Ephesians 1 is, is, is very, very particular. Um, um, in, in this church or the city of, of Ephesus, uh, as a quick reminder, it's a major place of business. Um, major trade will happen. It's in, the, it's in what's um, the, the present day area of, of Turkey is where this setting takes place. Um, this man named Paul, this apostle named Paul is writing this epistle or letter, and here it is. He is writing it from prison. Can you imagine that? He's, he's on lockdown, he's in prison, and he's writing a letter to encourage somebody else. Can you imagine? I mean, you're, you're in prison, not sure when you will get out, and you are writing something of encouragement to somebody else who's, who's physically free? Could it be that sometimes you may be physically bound, but your spirit is so liberated, you can't help but encourage them? Yes. Paul has an incredible assignment here. One of the key things of, of Ephesians is this, is that Christ has, big word, reconciled all of creation to himself and to God. Reconciled means to bring back into a relationship. He has reconciled it and bringing it back to him. So if he, oh, can you imagine this, that, that no matter what you've done or how far you've deviated from God, he is in the business of reconciling and bringing you back close yes. to him. Yes. So let's, let's get rid of this lie that says, you know, I've done too much or I've seen too much to be close right. to God. No, that's, that is a lie from the pit of hell. No, no, God says, I am bringing you back and I am reconciling you. And here's what's very, very important. He's using other people to do. He is using you to speak to somebody else so that they can see the light of Jesus through your life. Can you imagine that? Man, Paul, can you imagine that? That God will use dust of the ground like you and I to help other people see yes. who he is. Thank you, Lord. So Paul is putting this, 
this, this letter, you know, they didn't have Instagram and Facebook, he couldn't, he couldn't post on his page back then. <laughs> she had sent this letter to them. Can you imagine? Man, he is, he's writing this letter. He's in prison. He wants them to live their life differently. Right. Paul is reminding us in Ephesians of his immeasurable blessings and for us to walk worthy of it. He's reminding us of his, do you hear that word? Immeasurable blessings. And he said, I want you to walk worthy of the immeasurable blessings that I have. Immeasurable blessings that are available to you and I want you to walk worthy of it. So could it be, maybe God, I don't know, maybe God doesn't want to hear your complaining, maybe he wants to hear your thankfulness. Could it be you are complaining because you are comparing yourself to everybody else? Not realizing the, ble the immeasurable blessing you have on your life. Why? Right, no, no one would get excited about that. that that's, 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 man. Immeasurable. So this thing is very, very good because, because um, um, before, at the previous week, we were talking about things like adoption and things like um, being marked, being, uh, like, like being predestined. And today, I want to pick up in verse 6. Okay? I want to pick up in, in verse 6. It says this in Ephesians 1 and verse 6. It says, actually, let me put it in context. Go back to verse 5. It says, He predestined us for adoption to Himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of His will. Now, verse 6 says this, To the praise of his glorious grace, which, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. Now, I, 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 I'm studying this. I'm like, God, show me how to, how to communicate understanding, but there's also application of what's happening. Because I don't know about you, but I don't want to just read God's word and be like, yeah, I'm ready, and then leave. I want to read it. I want to understand it. I want to be able to apply it, anybody else in this room, and apply it to my life, right? So here it is. The, the beloved is a, it's a messianic title. It's referring to Jesus Christ, okay? He is more than loved. Jesus Christ is the beloved Son of God, okay? Now, here's right here. Now, we are accepted by God not because we earned it or deserve it, but because we are in the beloved, which is Christ Jesus. As a believer in Christ, you are in Christ. And because we are in Christ, God accepts us. The reason why he accepts us is because, not because we've earned it or we're so good, no, no, it's because we are literally in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says these words, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, there it is, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation, all things have passed away and all things have become new. The reason why he accepts us is because we are literally in Christ. So the reality is, I cannot boast about anything because I'm only accepted by God is because I believe in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Which is why at any point in time, you ought to be ready to worship. Come on, come on. If there's no band, there is no music, because worship is more than music. Come on, come on. I'm ascribing value to who he is. And because I am in Christ Jesus, Anything is liable to happen at any time. Look at this. He says, he says, um, to the praise of his glorious grace. Now, now some of us um, have this word praise messed up. Okay? Um, Y'all good? Yeah. Come a little closer real quick. Y'all seem kind of far away from me. We think, we think praise is this. We think praise is loud. We think praise is like praise music, which means like fast, upbeat. Oh yeah, that was a praise song. You know, it was like fast, it was, you know. Oh, you know, and that was a worship song. It was much slower. Right? I love worship songs because they're, no, 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 no. It's praise and worship, no, 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 no. It's, 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 it's bigger than, let, let, me, let me help you out real quick. Um, 
Praise means to honor, extol, and thank. Praising God is the activity of God's cre creatures in honoring God because of the acts and nature of God. Praising God is his creatures responding and honoring God for who he is. So because I honor him, I praise him. Listen to me. Words that are often used as synonyms in praise are words like bless, exalt, extol, glorify, magnify, thank, and confess. To praise God is to call attention to his glory. So when you praise God, you extol him, and you bless his name, you are literally, listen, you are speaking to his glory. Pastor, I don't want to hear all this I'm going through right now. Talk to me about what I'm going through. No, 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 because no, 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 not doing that. Here's why. Here's why. Because you want, you want the word to, to, to lift you from where you are. Praise him. I don't, I don't, I don't feel good, but I extol who you are. And as I extol or thank or bless who you are, you are picking me up out of what I am in and you are lifting me. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So could it be that praise has nothing to do with you or I? It's really, yeah. it's really about honoring who he is. Right, 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 right. Thank you, Lord. And the reason why we get in trouble with this is because too often, rather than praising God, we praise man. Mm. And it can be dangerous. Mm. Have you ever, we all have, praised a child for doing something good? Yeah. Like they, they took the trash and it was like, you did good today. The child get happy. Okay. My, my son, who's six, does not like chores. Anybody else got a children who do not like chores? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? So, so, so my, my son, my son will watch everyone else in the house clean. And he would sit there and play his game. It blows me away. So I say, I play, I champ, I, I man, help me bring the groceries inside. Right? And so, so I'll, I'll give him some, and he'll be like, Daddy, it's, oh, it's too heavy. It's one little bag. It's heavy. But then I'll be like, you better get that bag, boy. You better, you better look. He'd be like, oh, I can get two bags now. I can, I can. Something about hearing his name and telling him what's possible. Come on, PA. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Lifts him and, and calls him to be able to do more. Come on. I'm just, I'm just praising him. I'm encouraging you can do this. So could it be that we're talking like, God, I want to be able to do this. I'm going to praise your name. And as we are praising who he is because of what we're going through in our life, he is saying, you better come closer to me. You better, you better lift that back. You better. So what was weighing me down? A game changer. Listen to me. Praise. Ooh, 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 here it is. It's one of the many responses to the revelation of who God is. Come on. And I want you to some good notes down right there. Listen to me. Praise. Oh, God. Listen to me. Praise is one of many responses to the revelation of who God is. So when he reveals himself, I respond by praising him. Come on. Come on. You got that? But listen, 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 listen. When he reveals himself, I respond by praising him. Mm -hmm. Why well, want God to reveal himself? Oh, you don't know what you're missing out on. You don't know what you're missing out on. You can hear this. I'm not talking about just coming to church. I'm not talking about just coming to church. I'm talking about a true, authentic right. re relationship with the one who, if he reveals himself in this moment, I guarantee you, you will be able to get up out of that seat because the weight of his glory will sit down on your life. Listen to me, I, I praise God before I do business deals. I praise God before, before I leave my family. I praise God before I go on a trip. I praise God in everything that I do because I want him to go before me because praise is not limited to a building. Hey, can I get um, the real people oh, to hear me right here? There are some people who should be glad 
that you now know how to praise God. Yes, yes. that's me. I, I said praise is a response to revelation. Right? right? So, so some of y'all used to like to fight and be angry when a person revealed their true colors. Mm -hmm. Mm. You thought they were one way, but then time showed they really were who you thought they were. So you wanted to fight because of how they revealed themselves. God says, with them same hands and that same heart, you would have responded that way. Give me that praise you You will put your hands on them, but how about put your hands on me? Woo. The same hands that used to be angry are the same hands that are now lifted. Come on, Come on As we praise who he is. Yes, thank you, Lord. Ooh. As I was studying this, I saw this. It says praise originates in you and it's not just a mere outward show. It should be linked to the way you live your life. The word of God calls us to praise. Psalm 96 says, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, proclaim his good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. Hebrews 13, 15 says, Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. What? Rewind it back, back it up, flip it and reverse it. Wait a minute, what did he just say? He said, Hebrews 13 and 15, he says, therefore by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. You mean to tell me that God wants me to praise him when I don't feel like it? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? You've been in, in, in one, one of those moves to like, you know, I'm just not into it. I'm just not in the day. Like, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not into it. I just don't. Man, I, oh, I just don't. <laughs> I just want to sit here and just eat some ice cream and watch some Netflix. Yes. I had a hard day at work, so I just want to go home and just climb on the covers and just. Yes. <sighs> yes. I know I've been on Facebook while I've been at work all day, but I just don't feel like. I just don't feel like praising him, man. Like, I've been calling my girlfriends and my homeboys. I talk to them, man, but yeah, I'm right. like doing this whole thing. God. So I get out of, get ready to pray before I go to bed, and like two minutes into praying, I fall asleep. I wake up, I'm slobbing out of my mouth. I'm like, God, I can't even. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I pray before I eat my food. That's what I'm saying. I can't handle, I can't handle my food. Yeah, that's right. Sure not. God bless his food, but bless your name. Mm. Wow. I don't mind blessing my food, but you want, you want me to bless your name? Wow. You want me to praise you through what I'm in right now? Yeah, because of my grace. Yes. The praise of his glory and his grace. Like, when I think about his grace, mm. Thank his you. glorious grace, it causes me to pray. So a response to his glorious grace is praise. And somebody should like scream right there because here's what I think about grace. Grace is, is, is literally, listen, I, ooh, I don't deserve it, but he gives yeah. it to me. Yeah. 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 I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. I couldn't work my way into it. So in response to his grace, I praise. Yeah. Which means that you have a reason to praise him oh. and it Come on, come on, come on. At any time. Why? When I think about his glorious grace, I praise him. Yes. Even for some of y'all, even if someone tried to glue your lips shut, it would not work on, because you would have a revelation of what God has brought you and, and had to drag some of us through and your mouth will automatically open. Yes. Give his name praise. Look at this, verse 7. Look at this real quick. Look at verse 7. It's going to mess you up. Verse 7. Look at this. 
In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The focus, <laughs> the focus point of God's plan of redemption and forgiveness is the cross of Jesus Christ. Let me help you out right here. It is the, the focus of God's plan of redemption and forgiveness is, is, is because of the cross of Jesus Christ. It's because of the blood that was shed for us. The blood of Jesus, it speaks to his death. He wants to redeem us and forgive us. And it, it starts with this, this, this sacrifice of him shedding his blood for us. Mm -hmm. Why are we talking about this in church? Why are they talking about more happier things about, you know, how I can get blessed in 2019? Because if you miss this, what foundation are you building your faith on? Redemption means the price paid to gain freedom. It means to ransom. It means to buy back. The ultimate example of this freedom is when Christ literally delivered the children of Israel out of slavery in Egypt. He, he, he redeemed them or he, 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 he rescued them from that. The ultimate, though, sign of redemption is when Jesus paid for our sins through his blood that was shed for us. All the time, he was making the payment for our freedom, purchasing us so that we would not be our own because we are his. And because he died for us, why wouldn't we want to live for him? Except for God, this seems like it's so simple. God began to show me, yeah, it seems so simple, but my people are missing it. Yeah. And they're building their faith on so many other things, but there are people who are wrestling with this idea. What do you mean he paid for my What do you mean? Huh? We wrestle with the idea. What do you, what do you mean that he? You mean to, and, an all-knowing, all-creating God. What, what do you mean? He sent Jesus to pay for us. What? And it's not until we get the revelation, the mystery of his will, which is going to come out in, in a few moments here, the mystery of his will, that we're like, oh man, the scale is far from our eyes and our eyes are open. We're like, wait a minute. Whoa, he died for me? Can you imagine somebody loving you and they know everything about you and their love for you does not change despite knowing your flaws, your mess ups, your past, your of what it means for someone to love you unconditionally, like the same people who told you they would love you walking out of your life, but this Jesus Christ loving me before I knew him? And offering me forgiveness? You know what forgiveness means in the Greek? Let go. Means forgiveness means to let go. It means to no longer hold them or yourself hostage to what happened. It's hard to do, Jim. It's hard to do. It's hard to do. It's hard to do. You mean to tell me you want me? I know. I know they did me wrong. And you want me to let them go? Because until you can literally extend forgiveness to them, they have control over. Jesus.
Jesus says, I know what you did, and despite that, I'm extending forgiveness to you. But Lord, what happens if I do it again? He says, <laughs> I built that into the plan. Oh, so Jesus, does that mean I can do like whatever I want to do? And he goes, does that mean I can just go for like, yo, you're going to live my life, like you're going to live it up, be all good, and it's going to be good? You mean I can do that? He's like, no, no. certainly not. <laughs> because if you love me like you say you do, you wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to, to do to do that. Like I, like I would never run the risk of like being like, you know what, man? I got a fine wife and everything, but this chick over here is woo. So let me go sleep with her and then hope Leah forgives me. That don't make sense. That's 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 stupid. If I told her that it would break her heart, she's like, I thought you loved me. And now you're you're testing my level of forgiveness by doing what you want to do, and then hoping in response that I give you what you Good. He says, while I am extending forgiveness, don't abuse what don't abuse my grace. What if what if I'm not saying it's happened, I don't know. What if everything I said God gave you like, like some grace, right? What happens if like when we sin or whatever, what happens if like the grace did this? The grace did this. Each time the grace did this. You like think you got a whole rope of grace left, and he like, it's time to run it out. God, I got, I got grace for you, but you, but, but, but you can't play with me. You can't have all these idols. You can't put everything before me. Yes, I'm giving you. Yes, yes, we are saved by grace through faith, but, but don't, don't play with me and don't tease me, because my son will all the way for you. Cause my son didn't play with you. My son, my son took his pain. My son, I gave you my only begotten son, the only one that I had. I gave you everything that I had. Thank you, Lord. Stop giving me leftovers with your faith, and I gave you everything. Thank you, Lord. You want me to be just to you, but you want to treat me any kind of way. I believe you are breaking the heart of God right now. We are saying, yes, I love you, but I want to live life my way. I want to do things my way. I have my stuff. I have my life. And he's like, but what about me? Wait a minute. If it not happened, he could pull that car. If I hadn't did what I did, you really wouldn't have been able to live up. So why? Ooh, why? Ooh, ooh. If I had not done what I did, you wouldn't even have that life. So I redeemed you not for you, I redeemed you for me. Yeah. Yeah. When you get in me, everything changes because forgiveness literally cancels the debt. Yes. You want them to cancel your student loan debt. Yes. For you. Forgive it. Oh, yes. Right? <laughs> what if your bank call you tomorrow like, yes, um, we want you to know, you know that 195,827 cents that you owe me? Um, I, have, um, I have forgiven you of that debt. I guarantee you will praise God for that, would you? You would take your shoe off and go against the wall and just be, oh, you wouldn't tell me I don't have no debt? You will come, you will be up in this church next Sunday, 30 minutes early, ready to, I don't care what y'all singing today, I don't care what y'all preaching today, I'm going to praise God up in here. Oh, you going to you be, oh, you will go in. See how loud it got in here? Yeah. So that, and all, all the teens like, mortgage? What do you mean mortgage? <laughs> Why did it get so loud about the freedom of, of, of mortgage? 
You want to know why, Leslie? It's because we have revelation of that. We have revelation of what would happen if that happened. Could it be we will praise God more if we have more revelation of what it means that he has forgiven us? You see how quiet that was compared to the previous part of the Let me try it again. Like, if God forgave you, like, if they forgave you through the long day, they were like, yeah! Do it! Do it! Like, I'm, I'm curious, like, what does that mean? What does, it, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. All, all do all, yeah. All around me, God, do it. And he like, I already did it. And he's still quiet right now, but I already did it. I already redeemed you. Why are you still sitting there? With your... I'm already good. You know what I'm doing for me? Look at verse 8. Which he lavished upon us. Oh, come on, man. Come on. Come on, y'all. Come on, help me out a little bit here. Which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight. He didn't just strip it on us. He, he lavished it on us. Are y'all catching this, man? He lavished it like you have it all. Like, I'm going to pour it out on you. Like, hey, God, don't just heal like, or, or forgive some of this. God, I want God to go away. I'm going to lavishly. Verse 9, verse 9, making known, making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Making known, what is the mystery of his will? Let me hear real quick. The mystery of his will is that he would reconcile all things together as one through Jesus Christ. This tears down racial barriers. This tears down ethnicity. This tears down gender. This tears down various socioeconomic statuses. It tears everything down and brings all together as one. Thank you, Lord. The mystery was a secret in the Old Testament, but it gets revealed in the New Testament through Jesus Christ. What was considered in the old gets revealed in the new. We give verse 10 as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. All things being united in the earth and in heaven. He must be a oh, he, he must be a bad mama gel. And he can reconcile everything on the heaven and in the earth. Listen, some of y'all can get a in your own house as one. You wish you could get your own household on one accord. One accord. But he's so bad. Come on. He bring the heaven and the earth. Come on. Come on. Come on. You made, you made heaven and you made all things line up. Come on. You must be a bad guy. Mm, yes, you, must, oh, you must be. You got to be a bad. All things as well. That's the measure. His will is for it all to line up. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Last thought. What if I prayed for you and I said, um, what if my prayer for you was a prayer of alignment? Yes. Anybody ever, ever prayed that over your life? Like, prayer of alignment? What, what are they talking about? It's that, it's that, you know, you drive a car and they think like it's out of the line, they be like, well, you make your tire on the inside, got some tread, I don't want to know all that, it's, it's, fix the car. <laughs> when your carburetor is mixed up with your, listen, no, 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 just, just fix, well, you know, your inside uh, gaskets have, no, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want all that. My car is pulling to the right or the left, fix it. That's right. <laughs> it's 
It's gonna cost eighty nine ninety five plus tax. No. You talking too much? Fix it. Yes, yes. It's gonna take two hours. I fix it. Yes, amen. My prayer is God align us in you. Yes, fix it. I don't care how long it takes. Yes. I wanna be one with you. Yes, fix it. Yes. But my heart and stuff is all messed up. No, no, no. Yes. My tread depth is only a quarter inch and my carburetor blew up. No, 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 no. Fix it. But I checked my last marriage. Yo, I don't care nothing about that. Fix it. But my heart is no, no, no. Fix it. My heart is no, no, no. Fix it. Fix it. Fix it. Fix it. Fix it. I want alignment with you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I don't care how long it takes. I want you. Hallelujah. Yeah. If he's God and I'm you, he's the center. I keep finding myself drifting. God, bring me back in alignment with you. Hallelujah. I don't know if I'm worthy. He's still there. Like I'm, I had to move less. I'm still right here. I still, but you got my kids and my health and my. This is gonna go. Because when you get in me, yeah. all things are yeah. yeah. not like me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get cut away so that you can be in alignment with me. Come on. Because when you get aligned with him, Thank you, Lord. Is what happens. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Lord. The thing you are up against yeah. is not coming up against you any longer. The thing you are up against must now come 